After you've logged into eVital, click the menu icon on the upper left side of your screen to claim a decedent. Click Life Events. Click Death. In this example, we'll be claiming a new case. Use Locate Case if you wish to continue working on a death registration your facility has already claimed. Before you can claim a decedent, perform a search using the information in the Search Death Case form. The red asterisks indicate required fields. Type the last name of the decedent. You can set the date of death using your mouse or keyboard. Select Gender from the drop-down list. Click Search. A decedent sharing the same last name and date of death already exists in the eVital database. To ensure your facility claims the correct decedent, inspect the details of each case by clicking the Preview button. The top of the message box displays case status tags indicating the progress of this death registration. If you are claiming a MOVA decedent, ensure the MOVA case tag appears in the case status area. Contact the burial desk if you have any questions. The tags are updated as the medical facility, funeral home, or Department of Health proceed on this death registration. The fields below the case status tags display decedent attributes. Click Close when you are done examining the case. In this example, the case we just examined is the decedent we wish to claim. Click Claim Case. A message box notifying you of the upfront disposition permit fee appears. Click Cancel to return to the Death Case Search Results screen, or click OK to begin the payment remittance steps for the disposition permit. Select the payment method from the drop-down list and click Add Payment. In this example, we'll be paying for the disposition permit using a credit card. Complete all the fields in the billing address and payment information panes. A payment receipt for the permit fee will be sent to the email address you specify. Click Continue. Verify the billing address, payment information, payment authorization, and check the acknowledgement box. Click Pay Now. Successful payment is indicated by the approved status in the Payment Detail section. Click Continue to Case. The decedent form opens. On the left side of the screen, the Death Registration menu displays the forms you'll be using to complete this decedent's registration. The Personal Information group consists of required forms to complete this registration. The Other Links group contains decedent administrative and auditing features. The eVital assigned case ID number, decedent name, date of death and place of death are displayed at the top of all forms. The case status area displays tags summarizing the current state of this registration. The case status tags are updated in real time as you complete the personal information forms. Navigate through the death registration forms by clicking the forward and back arrows, or clicking the individual menu items in the personal information group. The grayed out name and sex fields on this form were populated using the data supplied by the medical facility that created this death registration. If additional decedent information is available, complete those remaining fields on the form. Set the date of birth fields and manually calculate the age at last birthday. The Social Security number field must be verified against the Social Security Administration's database before this form can pass the eVital logic checks. In this example, the social security number of the decedent is unknown. Complete the decedent birthplace and armed forces information fields. Click Save. Each time you click Save, eVital processes the form's fields using validation, logic, and formatting rules. Dots will appear to the left of each menu item indicating the state of that form. A green dot signifies that the data on the form has passed eVitals condition and formatting tests. A yellow dot indicates one or more soft edits. These are fields which should be corrected or must be designated as accurate. There will be field entries flagged as errors but actually contain valid data. Decedents using lowercase characters in their name would be flagged. E.E. E. Cummings, K.D. Lang, 
and Will I Am, which show up as soft edits requiring overrides. Confirm the flag data by checking the override boxes at the bottom of the form and then saving those exceptions. Yellow edits can be overridden and will not prevent the death certificate from being signed by the funeral director, nor will it prevent the case from being registered by the burial desk. Red dots indicate one or more hard edits which must be corrected before the death certificate can be signed. Red dots cannot be overridden. Click the Resident Address tab. Complete the Address section and click Verify Address. Clicking the Verify Address button activates a U.S. Postal Service check of the address. Suggested changes, which appear in a pop-up, include standardized abbreviations and ZIP plus 4 insertions. Select the recommended address, click Select, and the green Verified button appears. Click Save. Click Family Members. In the Family Members form, indicate the marital status and complete the parent fields. In this example, the father will be the decedent's informant. Select the Is Father Parent Informant checkbox. Type the father's name. The mother's maiden name must be the surname prior to their first marriage. Click Save. Click Informant. If an informant was indicated in the family member's form, their name and relationship will be copied into the informant screen. Complete the informant fields by typing the address and verifying it. The individual authorizing disposition is also specified on this screen. Select the Same as Informant checkbox. In this example, the father will also be the person authorizing disposition. The authorizer phone number and email address fields at the bottom of the form are optional. Click Save. Click the Disposition menu item. Indicate the method and date of disposition. In this example, the decedent will have a private burial one day after their date of death. If the current user is a funeral director, their name, license number, and funeral home will appear in the disposition form fields. Note the funeral home's address is already verified. If this decedent is being handled as a trade call, check the Is This a Trade Call checkbox and complete the information to be printed on the death certificate section. Click the Place of Disposition lookup to locate the decedent's cemetery. The percent sign can be used as a wildcard substituting for any character in the search string. The percent sign can be used at the beginning or end of a search string. Even multiple instances of the percent sign can be used. Click Select to add the place of disposition to your form. Click Save. Click Decedent Attributes. Indicate the occupation, industry, education, and ancestry using the text boxes and drop down list. The Origin drop-down list uses a filtered search feature. As you type a country name, the search results only display entries that contain your character string. Click your desired origin. Since the Race section consists of checkboxes, multiple selections will be accepted and will be successfully validated by eVital. Click Save. Click the Sign tab. This is the pane where the funeral director attests to being the signatory of this death certificate. In the Sign Case form, select the Affirm checkbox. A quick response code will appear on your screen. Tap the eVital icon on your mobile device to activate the application. Tap the QR code on the mobile device and aim it at the black QR code on the PC screen. The mobile device will synchronize with the PC and display a Please Align Your Face message along with the yellow outline. When your face is placed inside the yellow outline, don't move. The Certify app will take a picture and transmit it to the Department of Health servers. Upon completion of facial recognition, certification successful appears on your mobile device. 
This confirms the successful receipt of your facial image by the eVital application. When the facial recognition step is successfully completed and the facial image validated by eVital, the Sign menu item will have a white check mark inside of a green dot. The Affirm checkbox will contain a check, and the Affirm button will transform into an Unaffirm button. At this point, the death registration has been digitally signed and is now placed in the Burial Desk 1 hour hold queue. If this death registration requires any corrections or additions, you have a one hour period where you can click Unaffirm, make changes to the case, and reaffirm. Click Order Certified Copies. The Order Certified Copies form is where funeral homes place orders for death certificates, communicable disease letters, and death exemplification letters. Cases can be relinquished by completing the fields in the Relinquish Case form. Click Relinquish after you've completed typing the details of your request. Documentary evidence is used to upload supporting images of documentation pertaining to this decedent. Click Add Documentary Evidence. Documentary evidence pertaining to this case can be uploaded from your local or network drive, or by using a locally connected scanner. Note. Only JPEGs, GIFs, TIFFs, and PNGs of up to 1 meg in size can be uploaded. The Case Messages tab displays correspondence originating from the Department of Health regarding this decedent. Event Issuance History shows the details of death certificates which were issued for this decedent. Cremation clearance can only be requested if the disposition of this decedent is specified as cremation or anatomical donation. In those two instances, cremation would be requested by completing the fields in the cremation clearance form. In print forms, the disposition permit, disposition permit receipt, and work copies of the death certificate are available and displayed as PDFs. The PDF viewer features a mini toolbar which allows you to download, print, and magnify the document. There's also an icon which generates a full-featured Adobe Reader toolbar. Click X to close the PDF Reader window. The case status history displays the sequence of this death registration, with its corresponding dates, states, usernames, as well as facility details. Comments can be added to this death registration. Each comment entry can accommodate up to 4,000 characters, which is approximately one side of an 8.5 by 11 inch sheet of paper. Select the desired comment type, complete the comment field, and click Save Comment. Stored comments are searchable using the Filter Search text box. Registration validations show a summary of all edits currently associated with this decedent. The Validate button is used to rerun the eVital data check on this registration. And that concludes the death registration module for funeral directors.